From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Dr. Gorey. You left word for me to call? Yes. Wonder if I could see you sometime today, Doctor. What about? About the Abbott matter. No. I'm kind of busy today. I talked to you once, Mr. Dollar. What else can I say to you? That's up to you, Doctor. Entirely up to you. I can tell you this. I have reason not to believe what you said before. Now, look here, young man. I have reason to believe that Duke Red wasn't destroyed exactly the way it was reported. I'm not going to listen to any tall tales about a horse. Then maybe you'll listen to one about a man. What? Thomas Warner, Duke Red's trainer, is missing. I've turned the matter over to the police. Oh. Oh. Yeah. How about it, Dr. Gorey? Do we talk? All right, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Pietro, California, to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Universal Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Duke Red matter. Expense account item 8, 90 cents. Breakfast for me and coffee for Constable Tad Polk, San Pietro Police Department. Yes, sir. I'm glad we could get together this morning, Mr. Dollar. You know, I thought a long time about you reporting Tom Warner missing. Well, maybe I'm worried for nothing. But I do know I don't like the circumstances of his disappearance. You using me, Mr. Dollar? What? You know I got a police force of four men. We can't conduct any sizable investigation into a disappearance. Just aren't equipped for it. I thought it might be something like that. I don't want to be spending civic money to satisfy some doubts in the mind of your organization. It's not my province, Mr. Dollar. Look, the man's missing. Nobody knows where he is. He didn't leave a trace. He did leave a month's pay behind him. He left after an argument with Abbott. Nobody saw him leave that farm, Constable. No one knows where he is now. Now, just hold on to your britches, boy. I didn't say I wouldn't do anything about it. Huh? I'm going out and have a talk with Ben Abbott, Mr. Dollar. I've known him for a long time. Think maybe I can find out something about this. We'll see what happens there first, then make some plans. That sounds fair enough, Constable. Where can I get in touch with you in case I have to? I'm going over to see Dr. Gorey this morning. After that, I'll be at my hotel. Fine. Dollar? Yeah? You think something might have happened to Tom Warner? Yeah, Constable. I sure do. Expense account item nine, $2.50. One long-distance phone call to Hartford. I explained the matter of Tom Warner and requested Niles Pearson to have a man in Baltimore start checking with Warner's parents there in the event some lead as to his whereabouts might turn up there. After that, I drove out to see Dr. Gorey, veterinarian. You know, you have a way of not being very nice on the telephone. What is it now, Mr. Dollar? I just talked to my home office in Hartford, Dr. Gorey. They aren't very happy with the way this case has been going. They're too bad about them in Hartford. How does it affect me? Well, they're just about at the point where they might close it and call me back home. All this fuss and they're going to pay the claim? No, no, not at all. I don't mean they're going to pay at all. What? They can do one of two things. They can appeal to the insurance commission for a judgment... They'd have a point. No reliable or cooperative witnesses saw the accident to the horse or the circumstances of it. What's more, there's no carcass. For all we know, the horse may be down in Mexico. Now, look, or here. they can institute proceedings against Abbott, charge him with attempt to defraud. That's ridiculous. Why would a man worth almost a million dollars worry about an insurance policy? Well, of course, it's ridiculous to you and me, Doctor. But then legally, it's not ridiculous at all. I can pretty well put some things together. Abbott didn't even want to file a claim for the loss of that horse. As a matter of fact, he fired his office manager, Monroe, for filing the claim. Fired him and paid him a bonus to get out and stay out so Monroe wouldn't have to answer any questions, true? Possibly. Abbott blamed the accident on Thomas Warner and fired him, too. Warner hasn't been seen or heard of since. Now, you said on the phone... I didn't say it, but I'll say it now. Abbott hated Warner because Warner was seeing his daughter... I'll also say Abbott never struck me as a man who could control his hates. Tom Warner's nothing to me. I don't know anything about him. But Ben Abbott is something to you. Now, look, Doctor. I spent some time checking you out because you're one of the parties who can help settle this thing. You've been in practice around here for a good long time. People seem to think a lot of you. I hate to see a nice guy like you get the book. 
I think I can stop that if you cooperate. Now, look here. Forget I'm an insurance investigator. I'm just a guy giving you some information. When I said my company's ready to turn the matter over to the insurance commission or file charges, it means that Abbott will have to sue for settlement. And that's just what we'd want him to do. In court, he'd have to produce Thomas Warner and prove his story of the accident. I don't think he can produce Thomas Warner. With what we have so far, Abbott would lose the suit, and the insurance company wouldn't fool around then. There's no outfit tougher than an insurance company when somebody's trying to cheat them, whether it's inadvertent or not. You'd have to be in court, too, Doctor. Oh. Do you see what I mean? Uh, yes. Well, how about it? Can you give me the real story now? I've been Ben Abbott's friend for 20 years. And he asked you to lie for him. That's understandable to me. In a court, though, it's perjury. What'll you do to him? That's up to the company. I'll have to hear your part of it first. Duke Red was dead when I got out there that night. Ben had shot him. Duke Red hadn't had any accident. Ben made me promise to tell you that he had. Ben had just shot him. Shot him? But why? Duke Red wasn't the horse Ben counted on or thought he was. He had good confirmation, but he just wouldn't run. Couldn't run, I think. Ben got mad about that and shot him. And Tom Warner saw it happen, is that it? Yeah. Ben told me Warner saw him shoot the horse. He gave Warner some money and told him to go away. Uh, I don't know. Ben's losing his mind, I think. I've heard that about him before. From who? His daughter. Terry. Yeah. Poor Terry. Yes, she'd have reason to say that. Huh? Now what? I'll have to talk to Abbott. Sure. One thing still worries me. What's that? I went over his bank record. He paid out money to Monroe, but he didn't pay out anything to Thomas Warner. He told me that he did. Okay, then. I'll ask him about that, too. <laughs> Expense account item 10, 35 cents. I lost it in a payphone trying to get in touch with Ben Abbott. No one answered, so I drove on out to the farm. The short winter day was over when I got there. Darkness had already come over the fields. Darkness and loneliness. Hey! Hey, in there, open up. Open up. Open up, somebody, open up. Mr. Dollar, sir. Good evening. Hello, Cully. Didn't you hear me? Uh, Mr. Dollar, sir, maybe this isn't such a good time to be coming around. Is Mr. Rabbit here? Yes, sir, he is. But Constable Polk was out here this afternoon asking questions, and he got powerful mad. There's no telling what he might do. He's awful mad. Well, I'm a little mad myself. I'd like to see him. Tell him I'm here. Mr. Dollar, please. That's all right, Cully. You go ahead. All right, Miss Terry. I'll find Mr. Abbott, Mr. Dollar. Hello, Johnny. Hi. Oh, don't. Don't come any closer. Well, what is it? Why is it so dark in here? I'd rather you didn't see me just now. Huh? Terry. Vanity. A woman always has that first, they say. Oh, John. Who did this to you? Dad. He's crazy. I just don't seem to do anything to here, please him. Here, here now. Oh, Johnny, I think it's the end. Yeah, yeah, no. Take your hands off her. What? I said take your hands off her. I'll kill you with this. Oh, Johnny, be careful. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll show you. I'll no. show you. I Can't killed you. the man. The bad kind of thing. Hey, stop it. Stop it. Terry. Terry, baby. No. No, don't touch me. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Oh. Oh, it's... It's a pretty heavy cane he uses. Oh, lie still. I'll phone a doctor. No, no. Where'd he go? I don't know. Out that way. Johnny, did you hear? About killing someone else? He was talking about Tom Warner. Johnny, I know it. He was talking about Tom. I placed a call to Constable Polk's office, told him what happened. He said he'd start right away. After that, I took a walk around the grounds. All the cars were still in the garages. Then I heard some sort of disturbance down by the stables. Down there! Oh, Connie, 
closer. I've got a shotgun this time. I have a gun too, Mr. Abbott. Go away from here. Get in your car and go away from here. The police will be here in a few minutes. Look, this won't do you any good. Abbott, did you hear me? It'll be better for you if you're in the house ready to make a statement for them when they come. I know that Dr. Corey lied for you, Abbott. I know that you killed that horse deliberately. Abbott! I told you to get away from here! You said you'd kill someone. You were talking about Tom Warner, weren't you? You killed him because of Terry. Last warning. Go away. I won't go away. But you'd better throw that gun away and come on out here. I'm not afraid of you. The whole bunch of you! You're just being foolish, Abbott. Like you were the day you smashed up a new car because some little thing on it didn't work. The way you killed that valuable horse because you didn't like his running. The way you killed Tom Warner without reason. You're smashing your whole life now this way. Put down that gun and come out. Abbott! That's enough! Abbott. Abbott. Oh, you didn't have to do it this way, Abbott. Lie still. Warner's body. Under this floor. All his things with it. You know about Duke Red. I know. Don't try to talk. Warner tried to stop me from killing him. He said I was crazy, darling. Easy. I'm not crazy, am I, daughter? Don't move. Am I? Am I? No. You're not crazy. Not anymore. They found the body of Thomas Warner where Abbott had said it was. He'd been shot to death. Terry was still in the hospital when I packed up and left San Pietro. Expense account item 11, $65.30. Hotel and board at the San Pietro Hotel. Item 12, $175. Airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Item 13, $43 even. Miscellaneous. Expense account total, $802.65. No remarks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, the Flight 6 matter. A story involving a girl so beautiful that men were willing to kill for her. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Barbara Fuller, Barbara Eiler, Herb Butterfield, John Stevenson, Parley Bear, Will Wright, Robert Bruce, and Forrest Lewis. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 